Um, that is because if you look at the light coming from a star, then what's happening is you can think of it as spreading out onto surfaces of spheres of bigger and bigger radius as it moves away from the star. So in other words, if I am 1 AU from the sun, the sun's energy has been spread over the surface of the sphere whose radius is 1 AU. And if I'm 2 AU away from the sun, it's that the sun's luminosity is spread over the surface of the sphere of radius 2 AU, and so forth. Well, the area of the sphere is 4 pi times its radius squared. And the sphere's radius is your distance from the star. Your, all the light that you're seeing, if you're a certain distance from a star, the light from the star has been spread, by the time it reaches you, it's been spread over the surface of the sphere whose radius is your distance from the star. So the brightness will be the luminosity divided by the area of that sphere, but the area of the sphere is 4 pi times your distance from the star squared, and that's why it obeys the inverse square law. It's because the area that the light has been spread over is depending on your distance squared, because the area of the sphere is 4 pi times its radius squared, and the sphere's radius that it's been spread over is in fact your distance from the star. So that's the idea. Yes? Um, not really for this, but can okay. you highlight like why super like how a supernova happens? Yeah, so a supernova, uh, to make a long story short, because I'm not expecting you to memorize all these steps. But crucial is the fact, and I, I have this urge to I don't know what I'll do it, but it's not. I have this urge to see if my phone is still going here. So, okay, cool. Ah, uh, yes, very good. Thank you. Yeah. I can monitor that for you. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, if you see the screen, if you see that, yeah, stop. Then that way. Oh, wait, no. Is it... Oh, no, it's okay. It's... Right, because it's black, so the black means push it to get it's, it's right to stop the recording. Now. Oh, is that oh is that that thing? Wait, is red recording? No, 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 no. Black is recording. Red is start recording. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, Watch out. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Um spooky. Um, okay, yeah. Uh crucial is the fact that uh, the last thing that the star makes before it booms, before it blows up, is iron in the core. Iron can't serve as a nuclear fuel because if you fuse it with anything, that sucks up energy instead of releasing energy. So you get to a point where there is silicon fusing, sulfur and silicon fusing to make iron in a thin shell surrounding the iron core. That new iron keeps getting dumped onto the core, making the core more and more massive, making the gravity stronger and stronger inside the core. And before this, what would happen is you'd light up another fusion reaction. You'd light up the next stage of fusion to keep the core from collapsing under its own weight. But when the core is made of iron, that's no longer an option. You can't ignite iron fusion because it doesn't give off energy. It sucks up energy instead. So what happens is the core reaches what we call the Chandrasekhar limit. It has too much mass for the electron degeneracy pressure in it to be able to support it anymore. And so when that happens, it collapses in a fraction of a second. And the gravitational energy released by that is what powers the supernova. In a fraction of a second, the core goes from being the size of the Earth to the size of a city, a huge reduction in size. That means a huge amount of gravitational energy gets lost by that, and it has to go somewhere, and what it goes into is creating lots of neutrinos and blowing up the star. Uh, both of those things, it creates a shock wave that blows up the star, and a lot of the energy also goes into the neutrinos. And so uh, a key point then is as the core collapses, that lost gravitational energy is turning into heat energy. So the core gets so hot that it fills up with gamma rays that have enough energy to break the iron nuclei apart uh, into helium. And then protons and electrons start combining with 
one another to make neutrons and neutrinos. And that burst of neutrinos is something that we were able to observe from the supernova that blew up as we observed in 1987, relatively close to us in kind of the next galaxy over the small man, the large Magellanic cloud, which is a satellite of our galaxy. <coughs> and essentially then, um, the core collapses and it's made of neutrons now. And when it gets to be about 20 kilometers across, the size of a city, uh, the neutrons become degenerate, the core kind of snaps into place, the outer layers bounce off the core, sets up a shock wave, tears the star apart, and if the star is less than about 20 times the mass of the sun, if the remnant, the remnant core stays a neutron star, but if it's more massive than that, it keeps on going because, uh, because the core is so massive that even neutron degeneracy pressure can't stop it, it just slows it down momentarily, and it collapses into a black hole. So, am supernovae. I, am I actually not all of that? Sort of I want you to know about uh, the photo disintegration and the neutronization, the, the uh, protons and electrons combining to make neutrons to give off the neutrinos. I want you to know that. I want you to know that as it collapses, it's turning gravitational energy into other forms of energy, which ultimately is what blows the star up. A supernova is powered by that sudden release of gravitational energy from the collapsing iron core that becomes a ball of neutrons instead of a ball of iron very quickly as it collapses. Um, one question, um, yep. really quick. So is there iron in the core of supernovas or no? So they, a supernova forms because the iron core collapses. Okay. Cool. So the iron core collapses and very quickly turns into a ball of neutrons instead of iron. But before the collapse, the core is made of iron. A split second later, it's made of neutrons okay. because of these processes of the neutronization. Yes. So helium uh, atoms become. So then the, they don't last long because then the electrons combining with protons turns those into neutrons, and so they can't stay together. So those those helium don't last long. This is the first stage where they turn into a bunch of helium nuclei, but they don't last very long. <coughs> very quickly, they get broken apart by the by the heat in the core and by the fact that electrons are combining with protons and turning them into neutrons. So in other words, these protons don't have long to live as protons, they're going to turn into neutrons. So is it the first that the gamma rays? Yeah, so first the, so first the core is iron, okay? A fraction of a second, because the whole collapse takes a fraction of a second. It starts out as a collapsing ball of iron, but it heats up. So then it turns into a bunch of helium mostly because of this photo disintegration. But then, not long after that, electrons combine with protons and turn them into neutrons. And so then you've got a collapsing what is mostly a ball of neutrons that is going to turn into the neutron star or the black hole if the mass is high enough. Mm -hmm. about an hour and a half in, so. This is a witching hour for you, so that's fine. So you're talking about like protostellar disks, yeah. for example? Yeah. So um, as the protostar, as the protostellar cloud collapses, conservation of angular momentum causes a spin faster because its moment of inertia is increasing as it shrinks in size. So it starts to spin faster. And it's easier for material to collapse along the axis of rotation than it is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So what happens is you form a disk because the rotation itself
helps to keep the material from being able to collapse in towards the center perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And so you get a, a disk surrounding the star of gas and dust that hasn't fallen into the star. And planets form in that disk of gas and dust. So for example, the planets in our solar system all lie in nearly the same plane. And that's because that plane was the plane of the protoplanetary disk when our solar system was being formed. The disk that formed from angular momentum conservation causing the rotation to become faster and the cloud to flatten into a disk-like shape as that happened. So is the jet uh, throw off the material in the disk? It's coming from material in the disk that is trying to flow into the central star, but it turns out that if you've got a magnetic field that you produce a jet where only some of the material is able to fall into the star, and a lot of it, it turns out, gets squirted along the magnetic poles out of the central region. And so the jets, yes, the jets are material from the disk that is trying to fall into the star and instead gets redirected along the magnetic poles. So does the mass eventually decrease? Mm -hmm. Yep, so the mass, it, it loses mass through the jets, and then accretion, colliding of particles in the disk, produces planets. And then it turns out that when a star goes, when a star is very nearly going to start igniting nuclear reactions to go from being a protostar to being a full-fledged star because it's got hydrogen fusion happening in its core, it goes through what's called the Titari phase. And Titari stars, named after the star that was the first one discovered of this type, have really strong stellar winds, really strong flow coming out of the star, which blows away the rest of the material and leaves behind the final planetary system, if you will, the solar system that is formed around the star. So how does the uh, jet decrease? Because the sun, our solar system doesn't have this giant. Right, we don't have a protoplanetary disk anymore. Right? We, don't have, we don't have material being funneled into the sun anymore. And the sun's magnetic field is a lot weaker now than it was when it was young. So you and both of those things mean the, the mechanism that creates the jets is no longer active. We don't have much material to blow off. Yeah, there's so just not know. much to blow off. Yeah. There's nothing. We don't have a disk anymore feeding material into the young sun and getting squirted out of the jets. It's, 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 it's already eaten its lunch, so to speak. I think I'm going to stop the video at this point so that I can start uploading it for folks to I'm guessing that the big questions have already been asked. And so let me, let me turn this off.